12 months ago, crime fighters in Australia got a brand new weapon. It's a little gruesome, so it's hidden away in a secret location near the Blue Mountains west of Sydney. But already it's helping police solve murders and missing person cases. It's this country's first body farm. That's right, a final, very exposed resting place for some of those very generous people who agree to donate themselves to science when they die. In America, body farms have proven a vital forensic tool where investigators are able to study rates of human decomposition. A warning, this story is confronting, but some reassurance as well. It's respectful and sensitive. It's a warm night in southeast Texas and a fire burns in a secluded forest. A rubbish bin has been set alight with a female murder victim trapped inside. And she was placed in this trash can and uh, plastic was wrapped around it. Weeks later, when police make the gruesome discovery, there wasn't much left. When I saw the skull cap, I knew then, okay, I have the remains of a human here. The killer must have thought the dead can't speak, but he'd be proven wrong. I'm driving to an unusual place. Well, there's lots of things along the road I like. A place where the population is just 100 people. Like people who are no longer alive. My guide is Dr. Joan By the Way, one of America's leading forensic anthropologists. And this is her world. This is it, huh? Yeah, this is our outdoor research lab. That's what you call it? Yes. A human decomposition facility, commonly known as a body farm. Close your eyes, I'll be here for a while. Could have a thick skin to work here. Uh, you know what, I love it, so I don't, uh, you know, there's nothing here that bothers me. Like, I don't know, I just love it, so it doesn't really affect me like that. You get that unmistakable smell of death that comes across every so often. Oh yeah, yeah, after doing this for nine years, um, and plus working cases prior to this, no, you just get used to it. The body farm is confronting. So these ones obviously been here. For a while. Yeah, there are rows upon rows of rotting corpses placed inside cages to protect against scavengers. Bodies. What happened here? It burnt, obviously. No, this is not burning. This no. is normal decomposition is that, right? that you get. Yes. It kind of looks like. No. They were burnt. <laughs> no, that is natural decomposition. But this isn't a place for a ghoulish gander. It has an important purpose, solving crimes. What Dr. By the Way and her team do is study the many forms of human decay by placing donated bodies in situations similar to what police might find. What sort of scenarios are you trying to mimic in your facility? Um, scenarios in a vehicle, in a vault, buried, uh, wrapped in a, in a rug, wrapped in plastic, um, burned, um, struck with something and then laid on the surface. One such investigation was known as the body in the trash can murder case. May 21st, 2010. 
The charred remains of 46-year-old mother of three, Deborah Applegate, are found in a remote forest of the woodlands near Houston, Texas. Detective Keith Eccles is the first policeman on the scene. I saw part of the pelvic and leg bones and some flesh, but not much. And I, I went, yeah, without a doubt. I knew I had a crime scene. The bones looked more like burnt wood chips than a skeleton. So Detective Eccles called Joan by the way in to investigate. It was just a little piece here, a little piece there. We, we had bags and bags of, of bones. So it was scattered. It was scattered. Pretty gruesome crime, though. Yes, sir. Police recovered 85% of the skeleton, but most of it looked like this. Small and burnt fragments, but each of those fragments held vital clues, including part of the skull, which is where Dr. By the Way found something that ultimately cracked the case. Won't you lend your lungs to me? Mine are collapsing. Plant my feet and bitterly breathe up the time that's passed. If there's an Australian equivalent of Dr. Joan, by the way, it's forensic scientist Professor Shari Forbes. It's pretty macabre, morbid sort of work. What is it about it? that keeps you so fascinated? Um, it, it can be morbid, it can be macabre. I think we don't look at it like that. We look at the science of what we do. Well, this will be easy to see what vertebrae are now here. Now you know how many. Yeah, exactly. And here's another one as well. And so for us, it's very much about assisting the police. It's about assisting missing persons, victims of homicide. What keeps you up at night? Uh, not much unless I read a crime novel. A crime novel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More so than the real thing. Yeah, it does, bizarrely, because they're not very real in terms of crime novels. So they come up with scenarios that sometimes we can't even imagine and would never see. I am the Black Crow King. Professor Forbes was so taken by the science of the American facility that she opened one in Australia last year at a secret location west of Sydney. So we are quite literally in the middle of nowhere. That's right. But that's the point. Exactly. It's the first of its kind outside the United States. How do you feel about being called Australia's Queen of the Dead? <laughs> uh, I don't love it, I'll be <laughs> honest. But, you know, I really don't have a problem with how people want to term my role and, and particularly how they want to term the facility itself. When I see a body, I see something such as flesh, as bones, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Uh, I see a lot of different things. So instantly I'm thinking, how long has this body been here? What indicators are there that can tell me that information? Because that's one of the biggest questions the police will ask us, is to estimate how long a person has been deceased. I'll also see a lot of other things. I'll see the insect activity on the bodies. Uh, I'll smell the odour. So we're always looking at all these features that can tell us something about this if it was a crime scene. That's how we look at it. This new facility is helping death investigations in Australia so much that it's hoped more will be open. Up until now, forensic investigators relied on data from the US or experiments with decomposing pig cadavers to estimate time since death. Typically, how long does it take for a body to decompose? It's very dependent on the environment. In Australia, in summer, uh, it can be very fast. How long are we talking? Uh, a matter of weeks. And do all bodies decompose the same? No. In fact, one of the greatest challenges for our facilities is they they don't decompose the same. So we can't replicate data. We can have two donors placed on the surface in the exact same environment, exact same conditions, and they will decompose differently because they were unique during life and so they'll be unique during death.
After Deborah Applegate's remains were found, police investigated how her body ended up in the trash can. We had to try to find the cause of death. You know, it, there's people that die in the woods that doesn't make it a homicide, so you have to prove that a crime has, in fact, been committed. Back at the body farm, Doctor, by the way, reconstructed what was left of the blackened skeleton and found a tool mark on the skull which indicated the victim had been bludgeoned before being set on fire. It led police straight to the murder weapon, a hammer, inside the home of 26-year-old Robert Ellis Hinton, who became the main suspect. She was struck in the head first with a hammer and then her throat was cut and she was placed in this trash can and uh, plastic was wrapped around it. Uh, it was kept at a location for several weeks and then moved to another location and then subsequently uh, that trash can was set on fire. But Doctor, by the way, wasn't finished. She wanted solid proof of the police theory that the victim was burned in the bin after decomposing for two weeks so she recreated the murder scene at her body farm. We wanted to simulate that and replicate that, and so we did two trials of a person. We, we put them in a can, let them decompose for a couple weeks, put some accelerant on the can, as the suspect had done, and, um, and the results were exactly the same. The legs fell out the same, so I w then I felt confident that that's exactly how they had her in the, in the trash can. Robert Ellis Hinton was convicted and sentenced to 10 years behind bars. Do you think this case would have ended the way it did without <coughs> Dr. By the Way or her facility here? No, sir. You, you, cannot, you cannot substitute this kind of experience. There's more than just bones to a person, you know, so they had an identity. They had a history, so I, I, I want to expose that. I want to be able to give them a voice. You must know skeletons pretty well. I think, yeah, I do. When you're looking at me, do you see yes. me or a skull? Well, you know, I see your skull. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody I look at, I'm looking past the soft tissue to the skull. You yes. do? Yes, absolutely. The scientific importance of body farms is increasing, so dozens of people every month are choosing to donate their bodies once they die. Would you consider donating your body? Yes. Yeah, I, there's so much to learn from the skeleton. I am donating my body. You are? Yes, just not to my facility. <laughs> Because I suppose if you didn't, then it might be somewhat hypocritical. Yes, I think it would be hypocritical. Um, but as the director of, of our facility, you know, I see the benefit of it every day. And so to me, it's just a natural thing to do. So our environment is quite similar. Doctors, by the way, and Forbes may work on different continents, but their passion is the same. A determined quest to solve the unknown that they hope will continue long after they're gone. I often get asked if I'm afraid of death, and I'm not, and I think it's because I know. I know what's going to happen, and it doesn't bother me. You know what's going to happen physically. Yes. But what happens spiritually? That I cannot answer. <laughs> That's the big question that everybody wants to know. I want to know and that. And we'll never be able to give an answer on that one. Not from science, anyway. Not, not from a scientific point of view. Wait in the arm.